Josh Berry spins it around, backs it into the superior trailer, restart zone. There may have been contact with Josh Berry and Bobby McCarty. The left rear tire, you can see, yeah, look at that. There is definite damage to that car. You can see him make contact, Randy, and I, it's hard to tell from that angle whether Josh came down and thought Bobby was going to turn in sooner or whether Bobby stayed high. Um, I mean, looking at Corey Heim, it's almost like Bobby stayed higher on that. Getting in the yeah. three, you know, Spotter was, was telling me, Rear bumper almost clear. You'll have him cleared by center. And uh, I mean, he just sailed it off in there and, and caught me in the right rear. And uh, I mean, I just talked to Corey Hyman. He said, "Man, he said I had someone on my outside and I was dead in your tracks." He was like, "So yeah, you know, I mean, I, I mean, I just uh, come from 13th, never touched anybody. Uh, 22 just decided not to turn, getting into three, and sometimes enough's enough. I'm not proud of doing that." Got a lot of got a great team behind me and great sponsors that uh, not always proud to make moves like that, but sometimes enough's enough, and uh, that's that's really all it is. Is this go back to when you guys were having it out last season and uh, had a little bit of trouble on track? No, this goes back to tonight. I still own for that one. Big problems at a turn number four, nearly. That was huge contact. Lane that Riggs was puts even it down bigger. in the turn, and you saw what happened. Riggs dove it to the bottom, and Corey Heim winds up off the wall but big contact out of four turn one was even bigger yep sure there was, was no doubt about that Bruce, here comes lane riggs underneath of corey hine his he's momentum gonna, had been broken and he's going to dive all the way to the bottom here and just not enough for him Heim come back down riggs going up and you see what happened through the krc power steering restart zone three laps to go nolan pope spun the tires that allows Lane Riggs to move briefly into the second spot. And remember, Randy, Millington's restart's been terrible all they night. Have. And here comes Riggs. That was a the lead. big break for Ryan Millington. He, uh, oh, here he comes. Here comes Lane Riggs. We Two. knew it was going to be a factor. Two laps to go. The hood is now up on Lane Riggs' car. He has possibly sheared, sheared a hood pin off. One and a half circuits to go. They are two by two by two. Who's it going to be at the race at Ace 125, presented by LessExpensiveCars.com. White flag. White flag is in the air, sideways to the race lead. Millington, Riggs, and everybody else behind them. Millington's leading it on the outside, Tony. Can he pull it off on the outside? Oh, no. White flag is out. We're going to race back after a problem in turn one. Riggs moves Millington up the hill. Jared Fryer tries to get him. Ryan Millington at the is going to win it by approximately six inches, 41 thousandths of a second. Ryan Millington in a photo finish here at the Ace Speedway. Here he comes out of the race car. Ryan Millington wins the race at Ace 125 by LessExpensiveCars.com. When you saw what happened right about where you're standing between Josh Berry and Bobby McCarty, what went through your mind? I'm gonna be honest, nobody deserved that more than Bobby McCarty did. That guy cannot take getting beat. He is a sore loser. And this one right here is for all the little small teams that do it in their backyard. We did it! You did it, and you did it with a heck of a race. Walk us through, what were those final three laps like? We had seen this car, didn't seem to fire off very well over the course of the run, but it came to a few laps later. But you had a hungry pack behind you. How did you hold them off? And what were those last couple of laps like behind the wheel? Man, you know, if that would have went green there before Bobby got wrecked, we had a second place car. You know, we were pretty dang good. I felt like we just, man, we did not have the motor them boys had. It was uh, so hard to race them. I just had to drive the corner so, so hard. But, uh, man, we were able to get it done. And, you know, I cannot thank Lane Riggs enough and Nolan Pope and everybody for racing me so clean. You know, this one is just bittersweet. Next week, a track you've had success at, the Hickory Motor Speedway. Do we see you there on Saturday night to try to make it two in a row after winning your career first? Man, I don't know. We're going to go home to the shop, regroup, and uh, I think we'll plan on it for sure. And I know, unlike a lot of places in the country, you get to do this interview and race in front of a packed house. Your thoughts? Man, you know, it's great to have fans here. You know, I can't thank everybody enough for coming out. It's great. You know, we have everybody here coming out and supporting what Jason and Robert Turner are doing here in the Cars Tour and everybody. 
and man, it was just, it was an awesome night, and it was a great event, and I can't wait to do it again next year. Ryan Millington, a winner of the LessExpensiveCars.com late model stock feature here at the Ace Speedway. Wow, oh wow, oh wow. talking to both of these microphones wow this is the first all right guys very first thing I'm gonna do and I'm gonna tell you why the very first thing I'm gonna do and I do this every time I speak I'm gonna give thanks to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first and foremost and I'm gonna tell you why I'm gonna give him thanks because I want you to take a look around at this beautiful day then I want you to take a look at your beautiful neighbors. Then I want you to take a look behind you at that beautiful flag up there on those up, up, up there at the top of those stands. He is the reason why we live in a blessed and prosperous land. We need never forget that. In fact, we need to proclaim it every chance that we get and make sure that the rest of the world knows the reason why this is a blessed and delight, delightful land is because Jesus Christ reigns in the heart of the people who are here. So I give him thanks first and foremost. Second off, I'm not going to say a thing about myself, not going to say a thing about my campaign. You want to know about me, go to MarkRobinsonForNC.com. You can find out all about me. Today is about celebrating the freedom of North Carolinians. You guys being in this stadium, not being afraid, standing up to that tyrant that we have for a governor and telling him, Mr. Cooper, we will not comply. We will fight back. We will stand up against your tyranny, and in November, we will put you out of office and send you into quarantine exactly where you need to go. So, guys, remember who you are. You're North Carolinians. You're Americans. Stand up for your freedom. Stand against, the tyr stand against tyranny. And in November, let's cause a red wave to fall in this state that will wash conservatives into office and make sure that peace and justice reign in this state. Thank you very much, guys. God bless you all, and God bless the great state of North Carolina. All-American there for sure. I mean, you know, uh, great pre-race. I mean, you know, talk about how great North Carolina is and, you know, talk about, uh, you know, how great it is to live in North Carolina and, and, and being at a racetrack. I mean, that was a beautiful thing. He had a wonderful message, uh, you know, for North Carolinians, and he said, stand up for your rights, and that's exactly what the Turners are doing, standing up for the rights, and he is – here for the people because he is one of the people and he told us you know earlier you know he's been uh, like he explained it to me he's been from the dishwasher to the ceo and uh, so he can relate to all forms of folks and that's why he's running for lieutenant governor great way to start off uh, to get racing back going again awesome to be back at the racetrack danny uh, it's awesome to have you uh, in the big chair uh, for the cars tour uh Filling in for Chris uh, Ragel, who is, uh, uh, I don't want to say stuck in Thailand. I don't think um, uh, the pictures, if you've seen the pictures and the scenery that uh, he shares on his social media, I don't think I would call it stuck, would you? No, 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 it's beautiful. <laughs> Those pictures he, he, I've seen are, are definitely beautiful. Uh, and I've never been I've never been out of the country, to be honest with you, but, you know, Chris is lucky enough to be in Thailand, and uh, I guess he's rubbing in our face a little bit, but, hey, you know, I don't mind seeing the pictures. Yeah, now we're rubbing in his face because we get to go racing. Uh, that's right. We get to do what we love over here. That's right. But uh, but anyway, uh, as uh, Mr. McNally has uh, in place uh, a backup there, and that was in place even before the situation is. So uh, that way, if, if Chris, you know, here on the job, gets injured, gets hurt, gets sick, we have a backup uh, ready to go, ready to fill that seat should something happen with the race director here on site, uh, we have somebody there to take over immediately, and, and that's right. That's the way. The, that's the way the series is set up, right, Danny? That is correct. I mean, you know, everybody everybody has a position in the series, but everybody has a backup as well. I mean, you know, we pre-planned pretty well with the cars tour and uh, got a great uh, bunch of guys, and uh, yeah, that's the way it's set up. And, and for the fans, maybe some of the new fans that uh, are new to the series, uh, Danny Willard is who I'm speaking with here, the Cars Tour, the, the Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour. Uh, we just got finished with the the race at Ace 125 presented by LessExpensiveCars.com. And your son is the flagman. Now, I don't want to go be bragging on somebody, but I think uh, you had a little do with his training. I had a little bit to do. I mean, you know, I, 
you know, I don't know what percentage that is, but, you know, I mean, you know, uh, he does a great job, and, I mean, he's he's better than I ever was. I mean, I was good, he's great, and, you know, i got to live with it. You were a great flagman <laughs> in your day, Danny, and uh, and your, and your, your, your dad, which is, you know, his granddad, and we all call him Pops, he is the mayor uh, around the uh, the series trailer. Um, and he he maintains and takes care of the uh, the transponder uh, transponders, right? Is that what his normal job is? Yeah, pops he'll he'll help out with the transponders, collecting all them, and also he'll he'll help look over the tires after we uh, get the tire selection completed. So he's got a couple different chores he handles. So yeah, I noticed that he kind of serves as the mayor. Everybody goes to him, no matter what everybody's job is uh, around the trailer. So, yeah, but honey, it's a family I affair. A story so. From him too. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a family affair there for you guys. I just think that's awesome. You guys get to enjoy the races uh, as a family, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's 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 really special, and uh, you know I, I, that's something we'll always enjoy together is racing. Yep, and I was so glad that we were able to enjoy our constitutional right to assemble as a peaceful. Uh, gathering and protest in a peaceful way, in a peaceful manner this weekend at the Ace Speedway. Uh, thank you to the Turners uh, for their wonderful warm hospitality and all their staff. Uh, man, they have great concessions. They have a wonderful, uh, clean, beautiful facility uh, from top to bottom, A to Z. Man, they had that place looking uh, uh, sparkling clean. Uh, talked to Jason uh, did a podcast with him not too long ago, um, and he was t- told us all about all the hard work they were doing, um, you know, through the uh, the shutdown, the sl- the slow period before they decided to uh, fire back up again um, through the, the different phases, you know, th- for North North Carolina, and uh, man, this place was looking great. Yeah, Ace is really looking good. I mean, the terms have worked their tails off, uh, making that place. You know, it looked like it did in its heydays, and, uh, you know, ever since they've taken over, I mean, they have put their heart and soul, and, and, and you know, it's it's showing. It's showing, and, uh, you know, uh, continue hard work by them, I'm sure, is going to pay off in the long run, and, uh, you know, they have a long uh, plan in place to, to make a Speedway, you know, stick around for a long time. Yeah, I mean, speaking of family, like I did, uh, you know, before with you guys, the fans there are family to them. Uh, they treat them like family. They present them a fam a family fun place to go to, and they uh, they and if you want to go there and have you some uh, barley pops, uh, <laughs> uh, and that's uh, have a place for those folks on the back side. If you want to do that as a family, you could do that over there. Set around the turns and have a good time. There's a place for everybody at a speedway. Well, the race at Ace One Twenty Five presented by lessexpensivecars.com uh, got off to a quick start uh, tw- uh, Friday they had uh, 30 cars uh, was testing and they ended up with 28 cars uh, on That's correct. F- Saturday they uh, made I think they made a really good call uh, although the local news uh, g- got it wrong uh, as for the reason for the transfer over to Saturday um, I think they made the right call. It did rain pretty heavy uh, there at the track and around the area on Friday when they would try to got the race in. They'd have been trying to drive the track all night if they tried to get it on Friday night. But uh, come Saturday, beautiful skies, uh, beautiful day for racing. It was a little hot and humid. Of course, you know, no matter what, what the weather is, old Big Daddy is hot and humid no matter where I'm going. So, <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> qualifying... <laughs> Uh, much to be expected, Bobby McCarty, he's got the track record there for the um, uh, Cars Tour, the uh, Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour. The series record is a 15 434 at 93.301 miles per hour set two years ago. Uh, the same year he led every stinking single lap, put it on him that year. Uh, yes, he, he did. He put it, turned a 15 506. Uh, he went out late the, um, uh, in the uh, running so uh, everybody was uh, figuring he'd be fast went out late uh, a little bit of shade uh, the first couple of cars went out uh, and it was it was still pretty hot Corey Heim qualified second Ryan Millington who's been on a tear he's only raced five times this year between Hickory and um, a Speedway and he's won uh, no race four times coming up to the weekend and he's won four times uh, Sammy Smith back in the late model uh, race with us qualified for Trevor Ward 
uh, races at Ace quite a bit. He qualified fifth. Great qualifying effort for Trevor. Uh, Justin Carroll back with us in the series. I don't think he's going to run full-time, but it's good to see him race here at Ace, and he should be at uh, Hickory next week. He qualified sixth. Justin Johnson, glad to see him racing with us. Qualified seventh. Jared Fryer back in a late model. He qualified eighth. Lane Riggs, expect to see him did well. And Minnie Tyrell tested a lot at Ace Speedway, was looking really good. He qualified tenth. And uh, Jonathan Finley qualified 11, just outside the top 10. And uh, didn't hear uh, Josh Berry was outside the top 10. The first race winner, Taylor Gray, uh, outside the top 10. Um, Deke McCaskill, way outside the top 10. Uh, Gage Painter finished real good first race. He was outside the top 10, uh, 21st. So uh, big mix, you know. Some normal couple of normal guys that are up front. Some of the regulars that are up front didn't qualify that good. Brandon Pierce was 22nd, but he always runs good. Uh, Jessica Can she qualified with a 15.987. That was uh, the 28th car, but big improvement compared to where she was last year. And uh, the entire field was point. 481 so less than half a second for the entire field 28 cars man that's some great competition what do you think danny yeah it was a you know, tight field first to 28 i mean qualifying i mean i could tell by the practice speeds it was going to be you know tight and qualifying and you know just getting a vision when i got there of who was there and and you know i knew it was going to be it's going to be tough to win the pole, and it's going to be uh, tough to qualify up front as well. I mean, like you said, and I mean, you know, when you got people like Deke McCaskill, who is normally starting up in the top five everywhere we go, and Deke don't even qualify in the top ten, that tells you right there what we, you know, what we had, you know, at Ace Speedway. And um, run several of the uh, local divisions, which is always cool to sit back and, and watch those guys put on a show, and the crowd uh, grew and grew, and come race time, green flag for our – Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour race at H125 presented by LessExpensiveCars.com. What was your feeling right as we took that green flag? Because I know everybody was excited to finally get back to the racetrack, finally get back to racing. The green flag fell for 28 of the best late model stock car racers around. Uh, what was your anticipation as we took that green flag? Well, I know most of the guys that started that race have it, you know, you know, haven't raced since our opener at Southern National. Some had ventured out to, you know, maybe Hickory or run some races at Ace. So uh, had mixed emotions about how that was going to play out. I mean, it was a hot day. You know, you run the racetrack all day, working your tails off and, you know, you know, sweating and, and getting ready for the race. And then by the time you get ready to race, you know, it's night, it's cooled off. And uh, you, you never know what to expect. And, you know, but uh, with the field we had in place there, I, I was expecting a really, really good race. I thought they might start mixing up early. Guys, you know, eager to get out there and get racing, start mixing it up and, uh, you know, get back to their old ways. And But first 40 laps, next thing you know, competition caution. I thought, well, goodness, these guys are playing nice for the first 40 laps. Uh, what was your thoughts about that? Yeah, the first 40 laps were really smooth. I mean, the guys, I mean, they were keeping their noses clean, and, you know, everybody was, uh, you know, racing very patiently. I mean, you know, trying to work the way up there without tearing a fender off the car. Everybody was using their head. Uh, you know, the first 40 laps, that went by uh, quickly and smoothly. So, uh, good start. And then we had a restart. No bumping and banging, no pushing and shoving. Uh, the leaders kind of got in line fairly good. No pushing and shoving. Uh, from 10th on back, they mixed it up for a little bit, but they eventually got in line. Uh, a couple of cars kind of uh, fell out. I think uh, some brake issues. I think that's when um, uh, about during that time is when uh, Minnie Tyrell unfortunately fell out. He said uh, he, when he, he just ran totally out of brakes. And so, unfortunately, he has not ended early. Next thing you know, 80 laps are in the books. And caution-free for 80 whole laps. Now what are you thinking? Well, you know, we uh, <laughs> I was like, man, this is going pretty good. I mean, I'll be honest. I'm like, these guys are, you know, uh, patiently 
you know, making her way, you know, a little bit past halfway here. We're up to lap 80, and I'm thinking, you know, uh, <laughs> this could go, go either way now. I mean, uh, and then I looked over the back grandstands over and saw that big old full moon over there, and I thought, <laughs> well, you know, I, I hope it stays clean. That's all I can say, you know. And, I mean, in you know, 80 down and 45 to go, and, uh, you know, very – don't know what's going to happen next. <laughs> yeah. And, um, Josh, as we talked about in the beginning, um, you know, Josh didn't qualify in, you know, very high up, so he has methodically worked his way up. He, yeah, he's moving and up. And you look who's on the front row on this restart. you got Josh Berry to the outside, um, Bobby McCarty on the inside. So here they come around for the restart, and they get close to the restart box, and I'll let you take over from there now. Uh, Mr. McNally has always been known to be down in that restart box, and he's looking down at that line. He wants to make sure that they get in that restart box before they hit, you know, before they hit the the loud button, as uh, Dan, um, I think Randy says that. Uh, <laughs> that was with um, uh, Tony last uh, right, uh, Randy uh, Pettit, uh, yeah, uh, Saturday night. Um, and Randy did a great job. That was awesome. Uh, they did real well together. Um, and we'll, we'll get into the change, though, but uh, Mr. McNally's always down there. It looks like he's on a track meet because he gets down there almost like in a running position. <laughs> yeah. And he's looking. He he's eyeing it. And, man, hats off to him. He wants to make sure he keeps them straight. And they know that. So they know not to play no games. And um, But we had to do a little bit different. Um, so I'll, I'll let you take over from there. So before we talk about what happened, Let's talk about the change of personnel, because uh, I don't think everybody knew that, because I think I even heard Randy reference that Mr. McNally was down there making the call and eyeing Friday night. But that, it wasn't Mr. McNally down on the ground Friday night. It was someone else. No, we had to do some moving around. Uh, where I was doing the race direct in uh, part Saturday, uh, you know, Jack and I talked before the race, and uh, Jack decided to do my job, so he was in the tower, you know, uh, on Channel 2, and I'm on Channel 1, and uh, he'll do safety and clean up and EMT, you know, and whatever is needed in that capacity. Uh, we had another gentleman uh, official, qualified official down there doing the uh, restart zone. He uh, had done it before. Uh, most time, like you said, you got Jack down there, but the person we had down there uh, qualified, uh, no issues at all. He'd done it before. You know, just like all of our other officials, we can move people around and do, uh, you know, different positions as needed. Uh, all of the guys on the Cars Tour, uh, all the officials, they're very qualified and all do a great job. And, you know, where we have, well, sometimes we have to move people around, and that's just part of the business. And it's like out on other, uh, you know, other tracks, other series, it's nothing new. But uh, the person we had positioned down there, uh, had done it before, and uh, he's kind of jacked back up when Jack can't do it, I guess you'd say, just like I'm Chris's backup for, you know, Chris not being there the other night. And uh, what we had talked about uh, is uh, on the restarts, initial start, whatever, uh, you know, if someone at the control car didn't start the race like supposed to happen in the restart zone, then that person down there that was monitoring the restart zone was going to throw up a red flag with a yellow X, and that would notify the tower that, you know, the restart, from their point of view, they're right there on top of it, was not a clean restart. It was not legal. So uh, that's what we had in place. Okay. So um, for the fans and, and for myself, you know, I want to learn as much as possible because I'm old and I forget things. Um, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> Um, for on the initial start and every start, it's the same. So some series and you know people, fans watch uh, the Sunday races, um, and you know, and then they watch their local race, and then they come to our tour races. And sometimes uh, you got three different types of rules. So when they're watching our race, they you know they think you know there's the the flag starts, and or if they go to a dirt race, they you know the flag starts or what have you. But for our races. It's it, it's the same uh, start process every single time. Kind of explain explain that before we go into this particular start. Yeah, every uh, cars to a race that uh, we have, we have a restart zone, which is a banner that's located in turn four in some location. 
and that banner length is our restart zone. Um, nothing on the racetrack or you know or the racetrack walls controls our restart or our initial start. And the uh, control car, which is our first place car, will be the car that fires in that restart zone. And if he or she has not fired by the time they get to the end of that restart zone, I will give the command to go green, and the flagman will start the race. Uh, most of the time, by the time I say green or Chris says green, uh, the flagman, which is my son, Brandon Willard, is right on top of it. And it pretty much, uh, most of the time, it happens simultaneously. And uh, so it's, uh, you know, that's that's the way we do uh, our initial start and restart, and it's not very complicated and, and pretty pretty easy to keep up with. You know, being in first place is a good place to be <laughs> on the initial start and the restart. Clear view and is always the best. So... So That's at, it. <laughs> <laughs> so at no time does the f- uh, flagman start the race. No, no, right. not not with the car store. I mean, we, you know, I've been with other series before, and the flagman right. does. As a matter of fact, I, being an ex flagman, I mean, I've had to go by different rules before, but no, the flagman does not. And okay. in our series, you know, that restart zone over there, that 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 tells the tale, and that's going to you know start the race, and that's going to. Uh, also control the restarts as well, and by the time they you know get to the end of that restart zone, every single time mm-hmm. the tower will say green, and then the flag will say the green flag. Okay, so I, that that was my question. So if a driver rolls to to the end of the 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 start zone, then the green flag is coming out. That's correct. Ah, so so that's you know when the guys are talking about playing games, I was trying to make sure I understood what kind of games they were playing. Um, I'll, yeah, well, you know, so I'm I mean, thinking like next racer stuff, and 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 you know, with the the playing games, we know how this goes. I mean, you know, brake checks or right. or moving up or moving down or you know, slowing down or speeding up. I mean, you know, we're always going to be playing games, and sometimes, I mean, it, it's really it's hard to tell exactly what's going on because I'm not in there pushing the brake pedal or I'm not right. turning the steering wheel. So all we can do is the best we can from the tower and and with the resources we have. Uh, with officials and we do have someone down there in that position that is qualified whether it be jack or someone else and then you know my point of view as well and plus the flag stand as well we're all we're all looking at the same area and we're all watching the same thing so you know we we uh we have a really good idea nine times out of ten of what's going on and we have it under control uh, to me if someone was jamming the brakes almost coming to um a restart, it would t- mm-hmm. the telltale sign would be a domino effect. Would you agree? I, I would, I would, and and, and that uh, and sometimes I mean you can see that, and sometimes you can't see that. If it, it you know some of these restarts they, they happen so quickly and everything, and and it's hard to tell sometimes. I mean, who's doing what? I mean, you know, uh, you know, you, you have to just kind of watch how everything plays out. You got to watch your front row, and you got to see if they're. One's going up, one's coming down, one's slowing down, one's speeding up. You know, the main <laughs> thing is they need to stay side by side, and the control car, whenever he fires, that's when we go racing. Otherwise, right. we we'll wait till we get to the end of that restart zone, and, you know, uh, race control will say green, and the uh, flag will start the race. Well, what that tells me is I do not want to do your job. <laughs> no. It, it, <laughs> a lot of people say that. But, you know, it, you know, we all, you know, we all know the rules. We all, you know, get copies of the rules, and uh, everything's in place. Uh, you know, a lot of these guys, uh, 90% of them have ran with us over and over again. We only have a couple of new guys, you know, that showed up, uh, I think, for this race, uh, maybe maybe one or two that really maybe had to be refreshed on how we do things. And, you know, uh, uh, but, you know, overall, I mean, it, it's not that complicated. And every track has their own set of rules, you know, like we were just talking about a while ago as far as, or every series, uh, you know, whether the flagman's going to start the race or we have a restart zone. It's like Ace, you know, I'm the race director there as well. There's a huge restart zone up there, and, you know, the rules are a little different. I mean, you know, not not a lot different, but a little different. So, you know, but, you know, it's each driver and team's responsibility to look over the rules and listen at the driver's meeting and, you know, we won't have any issues, hopefully. But hey, they're 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 race car drivers, and things happen. <laughs> Absolutely, we're joined by Danny Willard. He was the race director this past weekend for the uh, Solid Rock Carriers Race at Ace uh, One Twenty Five, presented by 
the uh, lessexpensivecars.com at the Ace Speedway in Altima Hall, North Carolina, uh, had the most peaceful, most beautiful protest I have ever had the pleasure of joining. And, uh, of course, uh, Danny has uh, been part of the Cars Tour in multiple uh, positions. I think everybody uh, with the series holds multiple positions. Uh, so uh, everybody's got to be multi uh, ta- uh, multitasking at all times. So um, uh, it's all everybody's always busy with the series. So uh, you, if you want to be a part of the series, you know, you, you gotta you gotta learn to do a, cult- a couple of jobs, right, Danny? That's all right. You need to be flexible. <laughs> We've even got the chaplain Joe. I mean, yeah, doing yeah. stop and go and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I mean. You know, when you got the chaplain, you know, sitting there rounding up cars and helping them line up and get them in position and doing stop and go, I mean, that that should tell you something. Yes, sir. <laughs> chaplain Joe is always on the go, that's for sure. Love yes, him. Yes, he is. I love Chaplain Joe. I'm so glad he's in my life, I tell you. He traveled with us with the uh, UARA series and so glad he's part of the, the Cars Tour series, that's for sure. Yeah, all right, so let's get down to the point in hand. Here's where all the good stuff starts. All right, so... We come around, the light's out on the pace car. We come around. All right, we're in three. The pace car comes in. We come around for the initial restart, and the cars are coming to the line, and the red flag comes up. All right, now what happens? Yeah, we, well, we, uh, our guy down there in the restart zone, he uh, put the flag up that we talked about earlier, uh, the red flag with the yellow X which tells us that the restart was not legal, that uh, the control car did not fire first or make its move first. So we had to uh, throw the yellow flag on a backstretch, which that's always what we do when we have a bad restart that's not legal. And so uh, that's what we did. Now, does he uh, radio to you his, his call? Whether we communicate. I mean, you know, sometimes it's obvious who did it, and on this particular one, we, you know, we did communicate. Uh, we did communicate to make sure we were on the same page, uh, you know, because there was some movement uh, from the front row uh, before they got to the restart point, uh, which is the end of the restart zone. There was a little bit of movement there. I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, the cars kind of almost come together, may have touched a little bit, to be honest with you, and, you know, that was one of those deals where, here we go with the cat and mouse game again, I'm not <laughs> sure who did what, I mean, and, you know, all we can do is just go by who who rolled out first, and uh, that, unfortunately, you know, on that particular restart was the 88 car, gotcha. and he was not our control car, the 22 car was, so we gave the 88 car a warning on that one. Okay, so the cars still accelerate like it's a start, and the the, the green flag is still waving. Now, do you guys, uh, uh, and, and it's kind of a policy or a purpose type thing, where you wait until turn two before you throw the caution out on an illegal start? That is correct. We wait till they get to the back stretch, you know, and, and get the field a little strung out, you know. Usually we try to wait till about halfway down the back straightaway, and uh, we go yellow, and the cars by the end have kind of, somewhat sorted herself out so hopefully nobody runs into you know another car you know because restarts your bumper to bumper and it's real tight and you know I, honestly i hate to, to throw the yellow flag because of a, a restart or whatever because you know you are taking that uh, risk but you know we got to do what we got to do rules of rules and the uh, restart was not uh, legal so we uh, had to uh, throw the yellow flag so so basically that's a safety thing basically Right. That is correct. That yeah. is correct. So, We're trying to get the guys in the best the guys and gals in the best position possible to go caution after a restart with hopefully not tearing any cars up. Okay. So for the fans that are instantly throwing their hands up at the flagman and the tower, if you're a fan of the guy who felt like they got wronged on the initial start and you instantly start turning around, throwing your hands up, don't do that. Number one, they're not seeing you in this tower or the flag stand (laughs) and number two listen to what we're telling you it's a safety thing let them get around there let them get strung out so they can break safely all right absolutely psa over thank you i'll get off my soapbox now okay (laughs) 
thank you. <laughs> okay. All right. We let them get their wiggles out. Okay. We rack them up one more time. You come around. The uh, pace car's out. They hit the start zone. The, the uh, lead car hits the gas. Brandon hits the flag. And it's a good start. They get, through, they get through one and two. And they, and they rocking and rolling towards three. And I, I, I hear about sparks. And I'll let you take it from there. Well, we were watching the front. Uh, we had some people watching the back as well, monitoring that in the tower, uh, which Jack was up there with me. And we were paying attention to both ends of the field. But uh, the front part of it caught our attention going into three. Uh, there was some contact with our front row. And, uh, you know, so we had to go yellow because the 88 car went around. Uh, we went yellow, got control of the field. I went over to look over the replays. Uh, you know, we only have cameras in cer certain locations. Uh, you know, I, I wish we could have had cameras in uh, different locations, possibly for you know, for what I was trying to see. But um, from my point of view and the camera angles that I did look at, uh, we determined that it was hard racing. Uh, the cars made contact. Uh, you know, and uh, 88 went around. So. Uh, you know, it was just uh, determined to be hard race, and there was no, really, no uh, obvious reason from the camera views that I had to look at to make any type of uh, determination other than it was hard racing. And you know, the 88, unfortunately, he uh, spun around. All right, as a race director, whether it be with the car series or um, on a Saturday night at East Speedway. Uh, this is, I guess, this is an opinion question. Are you, uh, are you happy, or is it a hindrance <laughs> to have cameras at your exposure uh, to, in a situation like this to have cameras? <laughs> you know, I look at it. From, I look at it from. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's wonderful, and sometimes it's not. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and, you know, like I said, we we're, we're not. Uh, you know, we don't have cameras in every location. Yeah. Around the speedway, there's only cameras in certain locations. And, you know, I looked at a couple of different angles, uh, and, and most of the angles were, were angles coming, looking from my point of view, yeah. from which is from the tower. And, you know, it, it, it's hard sometimes. It really is. You know, you, you never want to... You never want to be put in those situations that sometimes you are as a race director. Yeah. And all you can do is be consistent and, and do the best you can. And, I mean, that's like that's the same thing Chris Ragel does when he yeah. does it, and that's the same same thing I do. We try to be as consistent as possible. And, uh, you know, sometimes you come out on a good end, sometimes you come out on a bad. It's nothing personal. It's just, you know, got to be consistent and, and you know, try to, try to call it the best way in the same way every time. Yeah, and... You know, and all you can go by is the angle that you have. I mean, when you're a race director, it happens in a split second. You were lucky to have the t the camera crew there, and they have you know the, the same angle that you're looking at. It's just they have a replay for you, which you wouldn't have if you was on a Saturday night on a regular right. you know track. So um, now with Jack up in the tower, did you guys consult? Did you guys uh, take a look at it together and? Or did he say, okay, you're the race director, you make the call? We did consult. We did talk. I mean, he saw from, you know, uh, uh, he did see uh, from the tower. Uh, as far as going over and looking at the replay and everything, I, that was me. I went and looked at the replay, gotcha. and I studied it, and I looked at it very hard and, you know, took a couple laps. And uh, I looked at different angles, like I said, and did, uh, you know, uh, you know, it was just one of those, it was just a racing deal that, you know, hate it happen. You know, uh, you know, one driver went around, the other guy kept going. And, uh, but, you know, there was contact, I mean, without a doubt. But, you know, there was no obvious reason from the camera angles that I had to to do anything, you know. Nothing, uh, no, nothing no looked intentional. Nothing looked intentional. 
correct. Okay. And, and that's from my camel, you know, camera angles and everything. You know, nothing looked intentional. You know, the 22 and 88 went to the corner, and you know, here we are on a restart. Everybody's bunched up. We're we're going hard. We're going hard into turn three, and you know, I I, I can't see exactly what happened. You know, I know that they made contact, uh, but you know, it was just uh, it, there was no other way other than to call that racing. I mean, in right. my opinion, and uh, that's what we did. So, now, now uh, walk us through just you know briefly about the policy um, under situation like this. Two cars make contact. One car spins, hits the wall, but can continue, um, and he you know makes a couple laps, goes to his pits. Uh, some uh, sanctions and some other series. If if you make contact and you're involved, you go to the back. All right. What what's the cars tour tour um, policy on that? If, if if two cars make contact, one car spins out. What's the policy? Well, the car that's in the caution, he's going to go to the rear. Uh, you know, and if if we have a thing in place that was set up, you know, if the car that made the contact with the other car, uh, if, if he wanted to pull down and, you know, he, he can pat on top of his roof and that tells us, hey, I made a mistake, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm wrong. If, you know, you can do that and then Take we can, to the back. you know, then you're, you're saying you made a mistake. Yeah, you, he would have went to the rear too, too if, you know, but... <laughs> Let's be honest here. Nobody's ever going to tap on the roof. I was going to say, how say many people have mistake, done that? So, uh, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, we haven't had that happen yet, and I don't think it's ever going to happen. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you know, if you, you know, that's a, it, it's a thing that's been put in place. Uh, you know, that's a rule that uh, I think Chris and Jack come up with, and some we've, you know, you know, try to, you know, to allow, you know, the drivers a chance if they did make a mistake to possibly, you know, say, hey, I made a mistake, I screwed up, you know, if you tap on your roof here, and, and, and then, you know, you'll be going to the rear and joining them as well. But, you know, as a racer, for ex-racer, I couldn't see me ever doing that. So I, I, I don't don't think it'll ever happen, but, you know, we'll, <laughs> well, I guess we'll wait and see. Yeah, that, that'll be interesting to see if it ever happens. But uh, Right, But gotcha, right. okay. So... So there's no if you're involved you you're going to the back none of that. That 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 not that's not a that's not coming from the tower. Right. I mean, you okay. know, it, it, the caution was the 88 car for spinning around. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, there was contact with the leaders but you know, that it, that was uh, deemed to be racing hard, hard racing. Okay. And the 88 car he he spun around. Okay. All right. So Idiot car goes to the pits. Didn't really look like it tore it up. Of course, it wasn't going to handle as good as it did before. But unfortunately, uh, as far as being up to leader speed, I don't know if he was able to uh, maintain that. But he was able to get back on the track. I know Josh wasn't uh, going to be exactly happy, but he was able to continue. So we'll leave it at that and move on with the race for now. Uh, so the race was able to continue, and that left... Some of the other Wildcats to continue racing. And, boy, they put on a heck of a show. Uh, some of their young faces that uh, has been uh, showing out here lately, like Ryan Millington has been uh, putting on uh, a clinic here in the, between uh, Hickory and, and um, A Speedway. Lane Riggs has really finally got that monkey off his back, and, and uh, the, the finishes are, are coming together. And... Um, the uh, the performances there, Jared Fryer running, you know, right there at, at the top ten and sneaked his way up to top five at that point. Nolan Pope is uh, right there running strong with the Lee Falk performance. Um, Justin Carroll, Blake Stallings, you know, didn't hear his name a whole lot till mid race. Corey Heim m trying to insert himself and run in the top five there. Brandon Pierce trying to get up there in the top ten. So uh, starting to see these guys starting to edge up there, trying to get in that top ten and crack that top five. Uh, let's 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 take it from there. You know, talk about some of the racing and some of the hard uh, uh, challenges for positions. You know, once these guys got going after that. Yeah, um, you know, Corey Heim, he uh, had a really good car. I mean, Bobby, 
Bobby, uh, you know, he set a pace right from the get go, and uh, you know, he, he right from the get go up till halfway, up until the competition yellow and so forth. I mean, he he was going to be a uh, tough car to beat, and uh, so was Josh until he had uh, his bad luck there on that uh, deal. But uh, you know, Josh had come up from 13th up to you know battle for the lead there. Yeah. Uh, Lane Riggs had come into play. Uh, Jared Pryor. I mean, we had. Uh, some guys that were really uh really advancing uh pope nolan pope i mean he really impressive i mean mm-hmm. really um you know he was uh with us the week before at ace and run up there with us and you know he he was okay but he really really you know really showed a lot of improvement last saturday night which uh lane riggs always runs good at ace i mean he's got a really good uh, record there uh won the uh, cook race last yeah. year up there and uh, so, you know, all the contenders were getting into place. Ryan Millington, I mean, Ryan Millington, you know, he won the week before at Ace up there. And like you said, he's won a couple of Hickory so far this year. And, uh, you know, Ryan being the, uh, you know, uh, track champion last year at Ace. So, uh, you know, I mean, we had, uh, you know, he, he was going to be a contender there at the end. And uh, so everything was you know, starting to play out. All the fast cars are starting to get in place. You know, uh, you know, some cars start struggling a little bit, and uh, you know, some of them had some bad luck. But uh, it was starting to play out there at the end. Uh, you know, who wanted it the most? I guess. You know, yeah. uh, out of contenders that were left, um, who had uh, something left to play with. Yeah. Then later on, um, you started seeing guys pitting. Uh, with um, uh, heating issues and then more brake issues, I'm not sure. I think the 74 of uh, uh, Ronald Hill pitted uh, later on, and then the 63 pitted several times. Um, yeah, he had some problems, 63, and Ronald ended up in, in the wreck over there. Uh, I think the 63 and the 74 were in that wreck, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Uh, down there in turn three and four, the, had an issue down there. That was and, one uh, of the last ones. Yes, that was, yeah. And so we... Uh, Pulled a few cars down there, uh, you know, and uh, of course going back, you know, Bubba Pollard had problems. You know, he, he everybody thought, you know, he was going to be a big contender and oh, they, yeah. with, the, with the new Reynolds car and everything. But you know, Bubba had his problems and fell out and uh, really didn't advance the way I, I think everybody thought he was going to. So I'm, I know they're, you know, I know next time out they'll be better. I know that for a fact because you got a wheel man, you got, you know and good equipment so it's it's going to work out eventually don't get me wrong yeah but, uh, oh yeah he's you know, uh, that's a brand new reynolds car he's uh uh everybody's well, what's bubba pollard doing there in the late model i'm gonna tell you what he's doing there if you don't get not figured <laughs> it out is, yeah he's getting some experience on a flatter track in a late model stock car because that man wants to win at martinsville and that's where everybody goes if you're trying to figure out get the bugs worked out on a late model stock car to learn on a flatter track that's where everybody goes at a speedway. We jumped ahead a little bit. Let's back up to the caution before the big one at the end. Um, I forget about around what lap it was, but it was um, when um, Corey Heim was really looking good and putting pressure on Bobby. Uh, I don't know if the contact uh, with um, Josh during that uh, uh, restart incident caused him any handling issues. Um, but uh, Corey Heim was really putting pressure on Bobby, and he was pushing him, and he was rattling his chain a little bit in the in the corners. And I forget what lap it was, but it was late, coming up off of four. He had a shot. He stuck his nose in there, and they made contact, and uh, they made wheel to wheel contact, and the right front of. Um, Corey Heim jumped up on the uh, left rear of Bobby's car. Then they quickly separated. Corey got off of him, let off, and, and let Bobby go. And they straightened it out, but it broke their momentum. And then when he got into one, Lane Riggs was right there and ready to pounce. And he dove in on um, Corey Heim, and they made contact. Yeah, and they did. Corey they spun. made contact. All right, Corey ended up in the fence. And Lane Riggs kept going. Now walk us through that uh, call, uh, you know, for that caution. Well, you know, like you said, everything started happening off of turn four when Heim got together, and uh, 
you know, got his right front up in the air, um, and uh, he gathered up, and that gave the 99 a run down the front stretch, and the 99 was looking, he was looking to the inside and right past the uh, start finish line, and, you know, it, it, it was close, it was close, so I did have to go look at the replay again, the 99 car did have his nose in there, 78, you know, uh, gave him room, but probably, you know, not enough room possibly, and uh, they made contact. I just, you know, that uh, that was another hard racing incident. Don't think anything was intentional there. I think it's just the way it played out off of turn four and the way it went all the way down the front stretch, sometimes that happens. I mean, you know, uh, you know that's, uh, you know, both, both, you know, great drivers, both have great spotters, and, you know, it's just uh, – that one just didn't work out. I, I think uh, if they go back and look at the replay on that, I think they'll agree on that one. All right, gotcha. All right, we um, get through that caution, and uh, Corey had to go to the back and uh, try to work his way up through. Uh, ended a, a great run for him. Boy, he looked good. I really thought he was going to have a good finish, if not win, if he got around um, uh, Bobby. I'm really impressed with uh, with that young man, uh, Corey. Uh, his spotter Lloyd Wild man. Lloyd, yeah, <laughs> he's something yeah, else. Yeah, friends of Lloyd. Yeah, that's my buddy right Lloyd there, boy. He's, he's my guy. buddy. Great spotter, great spotter. <laughs> yes, sir. Really tickled uh, with with how far he's gone with spotting and and doing his thing there. Real, real glad for Lloyd. I really am. Real happy for him. He's a good dude. Really good dude. Um, so we rack him up to get back to racing, and boy, they're racing hard and racing good. They get strung out a little bit. The 88 gets back out there. And then lo and behold, look look who's racing close to each other. Now, I asked you this, Mr. Race Director. Uh, there was some contact, but was it intentional? Well, <laughs> um, you know, I, I saw this, you know, I knew Josh had come back on track. But and he, I but knew he had Bobby been on the, was he, him. But he had been on and, the track. You know, and we're running out of laps here. And, you know... You know, I got a lot of respect for 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 Bobby and Josh. You know, I, both of them great great race car drivers. I mean, great records. I mean, let's you know, we got past champions here, and you know, I, there has been friction in the past, and I have seen it. And whether it be with the cars tour or whatever, wherever the race, and I mean, there's been friction in the past between them two. And so, you know, he was closing up, and I did my, I did you know my thing. I told you know the eighty eight car. I said the leaders couple car lengths back you know i try to let the uh cars getting ready to go a lap down uh you know know that the leaders are there and you know i you know i don't know what the 88 car is going to do i don't know what the 22 car is going to do i'm just letting this play out and you know i i really didn't think there was going to be any contact i mean i you know anything's possible i don't know how mad uh (laughs) you know a driver is or what they've got on their mind we we're not mind readers i mean all we no, can do is no. just, just sit there and let this thing play out and you know i knew bobby called him bobby started looking trying to figure out a way around him uh you know josh kind of moved around a little bit um uh, you know uh you know it, it was pretty obvious that he he might have had something else in mind and uh you know he was you know then i'm then i'm getting concerned about how this is going to play out <laughs> And then he gets around him, and then, you know, down the front stretch, he gets into him, and then we, you know, have the contact on the front stretch that sends the 22 into the inside wall, and we have another caution. So, he Bowman then, Grady. Know, uh, that was, you know, right there on the front stretch, and everybody saw what happened there, and unfortunately that ended the night for the 88 car. I'm just glad uh, Bobby didn't get hurt. I'm glad uh, Josh didn't that, get hurt. I, you yeah. know, I, everybody, I knew that was going to happen. Well, you know, remember last year in the last race, I was, you know, laid up in the hospital with my guts, you know, getting sewn back up. Um, so I totally missed whatever happened last year. I'm telling you, I did not see it. Did not see it coming. Everybody, oh, I saw that coming. I've seen it coming. I, uh, in all honesty, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't either. Yeah. I mean, I'm up here in the tire race direct and trying to do my job and, and hold the piece to a matter, in a matter of words. Right. And, uh, you know that's what I have to do. I, I try try to be consistent, stay on top of everything, and I, you know I, I didn't know exactly how that was going to play out. I mean I knew you know I knew I mean that the eighty eight car was probably mad because of what happened earlier because of right. the contact. Right. I, 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 but you know 
you know, I didn't know if he was going to send him, uh, you know, uh, a little message or, or how he was going to do that. And, and then when, uh, you know, when he spun the 22 on the front stretch, when, you know, they made the contact, you know, that was, uh, you know, we had no choice but to, right. you know, uh, end the night with the 88 car uh, for rough driving. Uh, you know, unfortunate situation and, and unfortunate for uh, Bobby. I mean, as well. Right. I mean, because right. Bobby, you know, he he led, uh, I don't remember, I think it was 120 laps of the race approximately. I think that's right. I don't know if that number is exactly right, but he led up until that and pretty much. And, uh, you know, I, I hate it. I, you know, like I said before, I hate being put in situations like that. I mean, that one, you know, that, uh, you know, you, you got to do what you got to do sometimes. I mean, you know, if you're, if you, we can't control it, I and mean, we can't see right. it coming. Sometimes, sometimes you can. Sometimes you can, you can, you know, see things happening. I didn't know that was going to play out like that, in all honesty. And uh, I hate it happen, but right. uh, you know, we did what we had to do. And uh, but on a fan side, when we were doing Race Twenty Two Radio, is this what the series needed? You got the two top <laughs> guys, the two top dogs, mad at each other. Yeah, you do. I mean, I guess, you know. This is what the fans needed. (laughs) They are absolutely upset with each other. Yeah. I mean, this is real. From what I'm seeing on social media, I'm I'm pretty sure you're, you're right on that. This is real rivalry. This is truly frustration on how they've raced each other or how one perceives the others as raced with each other. This is real anger. This is real. This is real rivalry. And the fans are rabid. This is this is what we've needed. This is something positive happening um, in a weird way to, to let the fans talk about racing. Maybe they're going overboard with some of the crazy anger, but... It's positive because they're focused on racing and not, you know, you know, other crazy things going on in the world. At least they're focused on racing. But on the personal side, I hated to see it happen to that degree. I'm just thankful that both drivers didn't get hurt. That's the main thing. That's I mean, the main safety, thing. Safety first. Yeah. You know, I hate to play devil's advocate on both sides. That's why we need to do the live show. Let let Langley and, and Roger do the devil advocate stuff, and that way I can be the nice guy in the middle and and love everybody. <laughs> and, yeah. But well, this, this type of this type of atmosphere <laughs> right here plays right into Langley Austin's backyard. Yeah. We do know that. Oh, uh, he's the one who keeps stirring it. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking from experience with working with Langley, yeah. But uh, <laughs> I just don't want it to escalate to where somebody's going to get hurt. Yeah, that that's the main thing. We gotta you gotta keep con- and control. And I don't want to put a position where an official could get hurt by getting in the middle of something that escalates where it goes too far. Right, and you never want that to happen. You never no. want the officials, drivers, you know, crew members, anybody. I mean. Uh, on another note, I mean, you know, both teams, you know, they, 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 we didn't have any brawls or anything, right. which was a good thing. I was no really of, glad for that. I mean, you know, I mean, with stuff like that happens, it triggers stuff. You're going, yeah. you're going, you're going to have tempers flaring, and, and a lot of times you're going to have, you know, people a little pushing, a little, a little lipping, and 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 as long as you know, we don't have any brawling. I mean, I guess, in, you know, sometimes that happens, but, you know, you, d- you don't want to promote that. Even uh, because, even when you know, that happened, we still kept it peaceful at our protest. That's at right. The, the race at age 125. We had a peaceful protest, and it was still peaceful. Pretty, per, pretty peaceful, you know, <laughs> during that uh, as well. That's right. That's right. And I'm so glad it didn't escalate anything in the pits because uh, I was not very mobile. Um, boy, I was my left kidney was kicking me in the shins uh, horribly um, Saturday. I didn't realize how bad I was hurting until I got down the road, 
really shouldn't have been there, but I was hurting. Well, that just goes to show how tough you are, Doc. <laughs> I mean, you're just so eat tough. up with it like I am. You just, you know, you got to be there, man. And you know, that, that's uh, Cause that's I don't dedication. Know. I don't know if I could have got out of the way if they started. <laughs> <laughs> It'd have well, been all over me. You know, <laughs> well, I, I understand that. I mean, you know, they, you know, they, they, they both have pretty good sized pickers too. So yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, they, they both are well represented. They yeah. both are very professional organizations. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, yeah, the, the Nelson uh, Motorsports Group. They you know they've got. Uh, a very very good staff and then you got junior motorsports they have a very very good staff i respect both you know uh you know but they did uh handle it pretty well after everything played out so now we see how we go from here yeah and and you know just one more thought on this didn't want to go on it too long but what really surprised me is uh if they maybe two years ago maybe three years ago i could see it and ex- and, and expect it um, a little more quicker, but now, I don't know. Maybe it surprised me because they're both are new daddies. You know, I just I don't know for some yeah, reason yeah. I'm thinking. Uh, yeah. You know, know and both saying. of them have got little girls. You know, that softens you up a little bit when you're a new daddy. You know, I'm thinking, oh man, you know how can I? Man, you're a new daddy. You're not supposed to be doing stuff like that. You know, and um. But, and then I thought, well, at least afterwards, you know, when it didn't escalate, maybe I thought, well, m- maybe being a new daddy helped not escalate because he said, man, I, I, I need diaper money. I don't, I ain't got no bail money. I need diaper money. So <laughs> yeah. maybe, maybe that helped. So, <laughs> so that's that. So we get past that, and uh, the 88th mm-hmm. park, and I know he's not happy, and, um, and he made his statement um, uh, that um, – that was for that night. He said he still owed him one for last year. So uh, we talked about that. So um, on with the race. Uh, and the restart had a handful of laps to go. And then they got jammed up in turns one and two. And then um, I think um, uh, the, the 19 got the worst end of that deal. Jessica got, um, I think she yeah, was she almost. Did. Um, uh, we had. Uh... Clear. We had the 41 car yeah. was having some issues, and uh, we had a real light uh, fluid uh, drop going down. And we pulled him down, checked it out, and when he pulled away, you know, was, you know, there was just a little bit of fluid there, and there was a little bit, uh, you know. So we brought the 41 in. Okay. We we were under the impression that the track was good to go, and you know. There might have been just a little bit of fluid down there. I'm not sure. I mean, we, you know, but we did uh, we did go back green because, uh, you know, we uh, had to clean up crew, check everything out, and we got the thumbs up to go. And uh, I don't think that caused the wreck down there in the corner. I don't think it was fluid. I mean, there might have been a little bit down there, but I talked to one of the drivers after the race, and that was in the wreck, and he said, no, no, it wasn't any, anything down there. He said he... You know that wasn't what called caused the wreck, and that was someone was in the wreck. And uh, but you know everybody has a different opinion. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you got people that are, are are lobbying, saying there's fluid on the track, and then sometimes you actually do have fluid on the track. But we did park the 41 car before we went back green for you know, and thought everything was good, and uh, you know, but uh, you know the cars in front of them didn't have any issues and we just had some of them in the middle of the pack look like they got together and unfortunately jessica you know she hit the wall hard and yeah uh, you know i don't know exactly what happened over there i, I hate it for her because she uh you know probably you know well was the best you know race she had ran with us i mean she showed tremendous improvement oh my goodness and yes i mean i mean i actually honest to god went over and told her and i mean she'll vouch this i told her i said you look good out there. This is after practice. I said, you look smooth. I said, whatever you're doing, keep doing it. And, I mean, I told her and Bill as well. I mean, you know, she's going in the right direction, and I, I really, really hate she had bad luck. Yeah. Yeah, I think she was uh, running 14th when it happened, and I'm not sure if she got shoved up out of the way or I think. I think the hole closed and, up. When and she, the hole closed she, up, and, and and everybody was trying to break at the same time. It's just a chain reaction. And um, and it swiped her up into the the fence, and uh, the belt 
uh, got her hard on her neck. I saw, she, uh, saw her picture today on her social media um, where it kind of skinned her neck up real good and banged up her elbow a little bit. But she's tough. Said she'll, she will be at Hickory. Uh, she's been turning a lot of laps at Hickory, so uh, she has really turned some improvements uh, at Hickory. Um, and speaking of Hickory real quick, a female winner uh, for the third time in history this past weekend. So we'll talk about that next weekend when we get to Hickory. So maybe a female winner in the Cars Tour for the very first time when we get to you Hickory. You never know. Never you know. never know. <laughs> but Jessica has really improved a lot uh, when you look at the last time she was with us uh, to this uh, time at uh, Ace Speedway. Uh, the speeds and has improved so much, and she does. She's looking so good out there. She's doing really good. So really proud of her. Um, and, boy, is she making old Doc Love looking good out there or what? She is the official outfitter for Doc Love and Daniel uh, with Race 22. Had to put that in there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> now, after that, it's a green-white checker, and everybody on the grounds is on their feet. Um, yes. And then it was, um, who was in the front row? So you had uh, Ryan and Lane. We had Ryan and Lane. Jared. And we had uh, we had Jared no, and Cole back there. Was no was Nolan on the front row? On Nolan. That? Nolan was in there with him. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Nolan was up there because he was um, up front. He was on that, before that big wreck, he was uh, started second, didn't he? And then he... Um, he said he. Uh, when I, I believe talk, that's correct. I, yeah. I, I tell you what, I can't remember yesterday. I mean, so I started <laughs> not to blur. But I mean, it, it, yeah, I believe that's correct. I mean, you know, like we talked earlier though, Nolan Pope, you know, you know, ran really strong and, yeah. and you know, best he's ran with us. I mean, very impressive. Yeah, and they that's basically their home track for uh, late model stock cars for the Lee Falk uh, performance and driver development. So expect him to be running good, and we'll talk about next week right here shortly. But Green White Checker. We got uh, Ryan Lane, uh, Nolan Pope, um, Jared, Jared Fryer, Fryer right there in the mix of everything. So uh, Corey Heim trying to get back up to the front five as hard as he can with just a handful of laps left. Got a Green White Checker. Now each start is really important now to to get them fair and square. Um, you know, so they come around for the start box. Green flag flies. Everything's a go. Um, cut him loose, and Ryan has been kind of struggling on restarts. Finally, really gets a good restart, man. Him and Lane put on a heck of a show uh, coming to uh, the Green White Checker. Talk about that as they come around for the last couple laps. Yeah, we went back green there. Uh, we had three to go, and uh, great restart. You know, we got going. Everybody up front was digging hard, side by side, double file. I mean, we were. We were going at it, and, uh, you know, Lane uh, was on the outside and Ryan on the bottom, and then you had a battle behind them. I mean, you know, we we're it's time to go, and everybody was going. Nobody was getting away from anybody, and, uh, you know, we got the two to go, and then we sit there, white flag, everybody's still together up front, and Ryan and uh, Lane, they put on a show all the way around uh, the last lap, you know, uh, racing very hard, racing like you're supposed to, putting on a great show, side by side, come off the corner, and Millen could just, you know, he nipped him. You know, he beat him to the line. Jared Pryor was sitting there right on their tail. Uh, you know, if, uh, if he'd have won over, he got a little crossed up there going into three, I'm pretty sure if Jared Pryor could have missed it, he'd have <laughs> yeah. won the race because he was that close to him and yeah. right, you know, glued to him and, you know, had the fans on their feet. That's what you want to see. You want to see you want a side by side finish, you know, coming to the checkered flag. Uh, with a guy in third pushing, you know, pushing them, you know, what else can you ask for? I mean, I guess you could ask for free while. We may have that next time. Just stay tuned. But, well, you know, last time and, uh, you and I worked a race together and saw three wide, it was uh, the UARA, and one car was sideways up on the wall coming to the checker flag, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I believe it was. I believe you're right on that. I mean, you know, I can't, uh, where was that at? I UARA at the uh, Ace. Yeah, that's right. It was. Yeah, that's right. I mean, you know, yeah, good memory. Uh, but you know, we, you know, we couldn't ask for a better finish. I mean, that was I a know. great finish, and both guys. I mean, they gave it their all, and you know, and we had a first-time winner prevail. I mean, and that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's what hard made it, racing. 
the crowd uh, got to see uh, all the way through fan, the race. It's crowd, crowd got to see a fantastic race. Um, Ryan, how exciting it was to see him win his first uh, Cars Tour Series race. And Ryan said in victory lane, five races. Man, this is the biggest one this year. This is, uh, heck, this is win number five this year. We've ran five races, won five of them. So, man, we've been on a heck of a roll. We've been working hard, just, uh, you know, really, really, really working on the setup side of it. You know, that's, uh, we can't have the best equipment, so we got to work the setup side of it as hard as we can. And, uh, you know, I've been working a ton of hours in the shop trying to do that. And, uh, we brought a really good car this week. It wasn't the best, but the way everything turned out, we were able to walk away with a win. And we're gonna go home and we're gonna, you know, write everything down, we're gonna take notes, and we're gonna come back even better. I know you've been racing hard for the last couple of years. What took you over that threshold? What was the difference? Honestly, the difference is, uh, it's just, it's me doing the work, you know. Starting to learn the cars, you know, learning how everything works, that's, uh, that's a big part of it, you know. And, uh, a lot of these guys, I feel like, you know, they'd benefit a lot from doing it. And I just, you know, I've been able to learn so much from doing it and bringing it home. And uh, it's just, it's invaluable to learn, you know. It's just, it shows that hard work and dedication, you know, it pays off and you can do great things. Absolutely. Talk about the late stages of the race, all the contact and all the crazy stuff. Talk about those uh, tight racing quarters, man. What, tell us, walk us through that, through, to the end of the race. Yeah, you know, I fired off and we were running second. and. Uh, I started losing brakes a little bit, so I just said to everybody, I'm like, I'm gonna fall back and just try to save the brakes, really. And and I did that, and you know, all that stuff went down. And I'd say lap, after that, lap 80 caution, I uh, I started going, you know, I caught Lane and, and whoever was in front of me, I don't even remember. And then I reeled into Bobby and got right up on his bumper. And at that point, I knew I had a car that was, you know, capable of winning. and. Uh, it sucks that it worked out like it did, but when I saw Josh, you know, getting ready to get lapped, I knew it was going to happen. The only sponsor we got is Bob Seville and his two companies, Leisure Time Rentals and Carolina Specialty Products. They pay the bills, and we could not do it without them. Um, Lane, right there within .040, says he and Ryan race very hard. Good, clean racing, good, good hard racing. Said even going back to last year, you got to root and gouge uh, to get those victories and good top five finishes. Even in the Rodney Cook race last year, I just whoever could survive was usually up front in the end, and it seemed like the same kind of deal today. So uh, we just had to keep our head on our shoulders and be smart. And, uh, like I said, it was so close at the end. I feel like I could have won it looking back. Uh, but at the same time, I, me and Mills both agreed, you know, that was great, hard, good racing, and we were both happy with the finish. Um, like I said, that's the close you can, you can race somebody and rub and bump without wrecking the guy for the win. So um, content with second for sure, for definitely for our qualifying effort. You know, just like I said, picked our way up through there, and we were there at the end, and we were contenders, and everybody knew we were here for sure. I think that was your shot when the uh, 78 and the 22 got together. Do you think that was going to kill their momentum? You thought you would be able to get get around them? Yeah, I, I got under the 78 car, and um, I guess he was just rattled when it all happened, and the spotter wouldn't didn't, uh, say inside in time. And I hate to turn him around, but uh, you know, I was I was up to his door. And he also added that. Um, uh, very pleased. Two races, two great finishes this year. Fifth place finish at Southern National. Had to put the roof on the car at the same time, and then uh, had a second place run here, and just cut nothing but scratches and racing rubs. And you know that's that's what it's all about. And like I said, that's racing, that's clean racing, yep. and that's what we come to do, and that's what the fans pay to see. Uh, they saw a dandy. That's that's for sure. Uh, Got to thank all the sponsors, and guys. We've been working hard during this quarantine time. Prairie Tank Lines, Remy Gets Construction, Turner Asphalt, Creech Heat and Air, DreamWorks Motorsports. Chick-fil-A Roxborough Road, Jacobs Glass Company, uh, Brown Brothers Construction, uh, Walker Auto Parts, Napa, and uh, United Auto Parts. They help us a lot on this car and um, like I said, get to the racetrack every weekend. You, know, you could call us a low budget team for sure. And uh, just, just glad to be up there contending for wins for sure. And I can't wait to go to Hickory next week. And third place finisher, uh, Jared Fryer, uh, talked to him, Danny, um, afterwards. And he was very pleased. Uh, they were very happy. Um, uh, putting themselves in contention for the win, but uh, said the middle stages was kind of rough, said it took for, took a while for his car to fire off. It didn't look good early on for us. I don't know, our car just took a little bit to fire off, and then it fired off, but then we were so far spread out, and then it started slowing down. I was like, man, this ain't good, which I started missing the line, and it didn't help that the car was just a little bit too tight. So there at the end, man, I just had to discipline myself and, and make it run the line to, to run fast there, and then they started falling out and we got lucky break started starting on restarting on the bottom and was able to pass some guys and put ourselves in contention so it all worked out the way the, the restarts were and able to be on the bottom that was that was just key at the end of the race we were on the bottom there sixth or fifth whatever it was and uh, was able to roll the bottom and kept run right up there to third and 
compete for a win, man. That's all I can ask for. Uh, just can't thank everybody that helps me enough, man. It puts a lot of time. My dad's put countless hours in it. Daryl Smith backs helped us build this thing. This is a first race on this race car. Um, Jimmy Moran believed in me, wanted me to drive from this year. We got a new car, and uh, it showed. Yeah, Nolan Pope, he had a fantastic run uh, with the Lee Falk Racing and uh, Driver Development Group. Uh, he was really excited uh, uh, racing as high as second, but really, really uh, static for a top five finish. I mean, once we got to like the top five or six, you know, we just kind of rode there, uh, let the race play out, you know, and then uh, we got in position on the restart there where we started third and we got to second and uh, thought we really were going to bring it home second. And then that late race caution came out and uh, just kind of spun the tires there on the start and got stuck on the high side but to bring it home fourth after starting 12th it's a really good day just proud of everybody at Lee Folk Racing uh, just really solid run it's good momentum on Hickory next weekend me and Lee Folk and then we race there a lot so uh, definitely excited to go to Hickory to have a lot of laps there like you said uh, sh should have another good run if everything goes good uh, Sammy Smith you know he got in trouble early just like last year when he made his debut with the late model stock cars uh, with uh, Timmy and the uh, Nelson. Nelson Auto Group, uh, yeah. folks. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I am so impressed with that kid, Sammy Smith. Yeah, he, he's uh, Sammy's great driver. Jumped in a late model stock he's... car, and I don't think he ever raced uh, asphalt. No, I don't until think Until so. last I mean, year. He, you know, he, he, the other thing going on with, uh, I think, with uh, Kyle Busch as well yeah. in the Super, if he continues uh, doing like he's doing, I think he's going to turn some heads for sure. Absolutely. Justin Carroll, glad to see him uh, race with us. And, uh, well, had a, a good finish, six. Blake Stallings had a quiet night, and he uh, very strong there, track champion there a couple years ago, uh, and also won the uh, Rodney Cook uh, Memorial a couple years ago, same year he won the championship, I believe. Uh, Corey Heim fought his way back to eighth place finish, and Brandon Pierce uh, had finished ninth, and Camden Gully, another guy who had a solid run, uh, quietly finished in the top ten, so... Uh, Connor Mosek finished 11th, Gage Painter 12th, so these guys had a great finish, and Jessica did get uh, credit for finishing 17th, uh, so she was running real good um, until she ended up uh, with that late finish, uh, late crash, so um, about half the field finish, um, a lot of guys falling out with mechanical, not uh, crashes, so um, Josh Berry uh, on the penalty being uh, relegated to 28th on race night. Rule received no points on the penalty. Um, and, of course, the penalty coming down, uh, one race penalty will not be eligible to race at his home track, Hickory Motor Speedway, coming up this Saturday night. So he didn't get any points, uh, and he basically uh, finished 28th with no point at a speedway. So, Danny, barring any... Um, appeals uh, Josh won't be racing with us at Hickory Motor Speedway and yeah uh, you know uh, due to circumstance and everything I mean I hate that uh, he won't be with us but uh, you know uh, hopefully we'll have him back real soon yeah. next one and uh, you know we'll see how uh, everything plays out for the rest of the year yeah absolutely and Dick McCaskill was one of the first uh, cars out. He had uh, some kind of issue. I didn't hear what it was, but uh, hated to see that because he had a lot of speed at um, Southern National. That's his home track. Qualified on the pole, finished second. Uh, so he had started his season off really good, but had mechanical trouble there. Mini tire rail, brake issues. Chad McCombie showed a lot of speed um, at uh, Southern National. Didn't have the yes, finish he, he wanted, but uh, had a lot of speed, but finished you know, 25th. Jonathan Finley was uh, showing a lot of speed here at Ace. Um, fell out early, had a mechanical issue. We talked about Bubba Pollard. Justin Johnson didn't have the finish he wanted to finish 22nd. Ronald Hill, 21st. Tyler Matthew, 20th. Adam Lemke, 19th. Bobby McCarty credited with 18th. I had a word with Bobby McCarty uh, after the race, and um, he said he felt like something was going to happen. Uh, once uh, he approached, uh, he started to reel in uh, Josh Sperry, uh, and he spoke about the contact in turn three on that uh, restart. I had a feeling something was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be that. Um, but, you know, you get frustrated. You do stuff like that. Um, it's part of it, man. You know, I, I felt getting in the three, you know, spotter was, was telling me, Rear bumper almost clear. You'll have him cleared by center. 
And uh, I mean, he just sailed it off in there and, and caught me in the right rear. And uh, I mean, I just talked to Corey Heim and he said, man, he said, I had someone on my outside and I was dead in your tracks. He was like, so yeah, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's frustrating. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure it bent the tube on the axle or something after that and it just, I couldn't get out the corner. Um, I mean, like I said, I, I was trying to race a guy and I had plenty of people on my outside tonight and there was not one problem. So, uh, I mean, it's frustrating. You know, I felt we had a good car up until that point and, you know, you know, I got to thank everybody at Autos by Nelson and, and, and Solid Ride Carriers and Castro, Toyota, BTS, Tire and Wheel. I mean, they they give me a good piece and, you know, I, I felt we had a really good car and stuff happens. Josh was asked uh, about, um, was it carryover from last year? And he said, no, tonight was about the contact that you had spoke about um, tonight. And he said they still owes you one from last year. I don't hide behind race cars, so uh, he can do what he wants. Um, uh, I'm coming to win races, so uh, I mean this is this is frustrating, you know. If if it was something I did, I'd, I'd man up to it and say, yeah, that was all on me. But you're back behind my right rear, getting in the corner, and I'm on the inside. You're never going to convince me. I, I wrecked you. I've been doing this for 22 years, and that don't even sound right. So uh, it is what it is. Like I said, it's frustrating. I hate it for the guys, but we'll uh, we'll get her back together and, and we'll go to work. So as far as you're concerned, you're going to Hickory to race, win races, and no carryover. That's all I do, man. I, I go to win races. You know, I, I don't, I don't believe in hiding behind a race car. So um, when I'm at the racetrack, I'm here to win, um, and that's that's what we're going to do. Are you going to try to reach out to him and talk to him, maybe? No, I ain't going to reach out to him. I mean, he, he knows he knows what went on. He won't admit it, but he knows. So uh, like I said, I I care less what he does. Um, what respect I did have for him is gone now. And like I said, we're solely focused on winning races, and we'll move forward. So, uh, last week's, the first, and I keep saying last week, well, first race winner, um, Taylor Gray was credited with 16th. Didn't really talk about him much throughout the day uh, on race day at a Speedway. Um, didn't really uh, hear too much about him, whether he had an ill-handling car or, um, you know, anything going on with him. So... Uh, just wasn't his night there at Ace Speedway. He yeah. had a lot of speed there last year. Um, he, he did. Uh, he, I, I don't know exactly if he had handling issues or what, but Taylor, he just never, never really, uh, never, you know, never showed the speed that he had at Southern yeah. National at the opener. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I don't know what their problems were. Of course, on that last, uh, that last uh, three-lap stint we had there before the checker flag, he, uh, Got him and someone got together down there, and he spun around uh, on the white flag lap, and then he recovered and pulled away. You know, I don't think he hit anything, but gotcha. just it just had a bad race. Yeah, he was the last car on the lead lap, so he was 16th, and Matt Cox finished 15th, and Jonathan Schaefer 14th, Trevor Ward 13th, and as I said, Gage Painter finished 12th. So that's kind of a not in a in a nutshell how the field finished. So. That's the field. Let's take a quick look at uh, unofficially, unofficially, uh, the points. As uh, since you're a mathematician and a machinist, you're good at math. <laughs> so going into the race, Lane Riggs is the official points leader. As we head to Hickory this coming week, uh, Taylor Gray hell, went from the leader by virtue of winning last week or, or the first race of this season. Uh, before all the craziness happened. Uh, he is, he held on to second, so he didn't drop too far. Connor Mosick is tied for second. Uh, there's a two-way tie for second. Yeah, he's tied, yeah. Uh, Jared Fryer, big jump from where he was uh, before ace. Now he's in fourth by virtue of that third-place finish. Great job for Jared and his dad, um, Mark. Um, Nolan Pope, fifth. Corey Heim, 6th in points. Jonathan Schaefer, 7th in points. And Bobby McCarty, 8th in points, tied with uh, Brandon Pierce. Uh, 41 points for both of those. And 10th is Deke McCaskill. So he's got a pretty good way to climb to get to the top of the heat because you know he wants that championship for Deke McCaskill. He also wants to win races. Well, actually, it's a tie, two-way tie for 10th, Matt Cox. He's tied for 10th, and Ronald Hill's not far out of there. He's with 
that's with the 39 points, 38 points for Ronald Hill. Um, 38 points just outside the top 10. Uh, Ronald Hill, so we want to see him have a good finish and climb up that um, points ladder on his final full season. Said he's not totally retiring. He said he's retiring from full-time racing, says Ronald Hill. So um, I think it's uh, cool how it worked out for this year to have our grand finale, the, the big show at um, Orange County Speedway for his final race as a full season competitor with a, a solid rock carriers course, um, cars tour. Um, cause you know, that's his home track. You know, he'll be having some kind of shindig and I know I'm going to go hang out with him over there. So, yeah, I think I'm going to join him. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, my man, uh, what's your thoughts about coming up this uh, coming weekend at Hickory, the Hickory motor speedway? Coming up, you know, this is very rare for the late model stocks to have back-to-back -back races. What's your thoughts? I think we'll have a good field. I think we'll have a really, uh, really good field again, late model stocks and super late models. You know, some of the super late model guys have been sitting for a while as well. They, some of them haven't raced uh, since the uh, Southern National race, the opener with us. So I think, uh, I think we'll have a really good field in both. And uh, I think it's going to be, you know, a really good race. I, you know, I really hate that the, the fans won't be with us at Hickory Motor Speedway due to uh, the uh, current situation. Uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we'll be, you know, I know a lot of them will be watching uh, from uh, uh, the media outlet, uh, you know, different, uh, whichever venue they decide to choose. I mean, you know, we'll, uh, I'm pretty sure Pit Road TV will be pretty live and, and, uh, no. Going strong uh, this weekend. I think they're the one covering this, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so uh, I think uh, we'll have uh, a lot of people watching to see how everything plays out and see uh, what happens next with uh, you know our car store uh, divisions, late model stock and super late models. Uh, uh, Hickory's always, always a really good track for both divisions. I mean, both races are usually very. Very good shows on that uh, worn out slick uh, little track up there, 0.363 mile speedway. Uh, but uh, I think, uh, you know, um, I think we're in for a treat this weekend. Oh, absolutely. The, uh, was it Race Face Telemed 300, I think they're calling it this kind of weekend? I think that's so correct. I think I did see that, you looking know. Looking forward to uh, learning a whole lot more about that. It's uh, medical and lifestyle benefits. So always looking forward to learning more about that. We'll share more about that and as the week progresses. And uh, now, have you heard? Is it uh, have they put that to rest yet about the fans, or um, uh, is that still yet to be determined about the fans? Well, anything can change. I mean, you know, our governor's in control right now. I mean, anything can change. I guess before Saturday, but from what we're being told right now, fans won't be allowed. But you know, I, I really hope you know if something. If something changes at the last minute, hey, the gates be open. So I mean, everybody needs to pay attention, <laughs> you know, just like you know, you know, like they are right now with all their you know local short tracks and or whatever series they follow. I mean, everybody's paying attention, seeing when they can get to the track if they haven't been able to get to the racetrack. So I really hope that something changes before Saturday. And uh, you know, if they do, I'm sure we'll you know pack the place. So uh, it's just not the same without it's not the same without the fans there. It never will be. Never, you know. So you know, uh, the race is going to go on either way. Uh, so uh, we'll see uh, what the end of the week brings. Hopefully, it changes and we get to see the fans. Friday, they will have a practice session for late models and super late models, starting at two thirty, and we'll practice all the way to six thirty. Pits will close at seven p.m. That's on Friday, uh, June the twelfth. Saturday, the practice session will start with the late model stocks at 1 o'clock. That's on Saturday, June 13th. And if they do get the uh, racing fans, the race fans there, the gates will open at 4.30. So if we can get the fans at the stands, uh, the grandstands will open at 4.30 at the Hickory Motor Speedway. So that's the information we can give out currently. So please keep it tuned to um, carsracingtour.com, hickorymotorspeedway.com for uh, all the information. 
concerning the fans. Um, so uh, hopefully race22.com. I know Langley will be all over it, and uh, I will try to keep on top of that myself. Uh, so keep uh, keep on top of that, and uh, we'll drop it as quick as we can on those media outlets, uh, Race 22, uh, Facebook, things of that nature. As soon as we get the official word, we'll get it out as quick as we can, uh, all those media outlets. Danny, um, is it official? Will you be in the big chair calling the race this coming week? Uh, unless something uh, changes, uh, yeah, I'll be back in the chair this week. Uh, that's uh, the information uh, that I've been given okay. right now. Don't know when Mr. Regal will be uh, making his presence again. Uh, you know, we'll just have to play it by ear and see how uh, everything uh, how everything works out there. But uh, as far as I know, yes, I'll be back in uh back as a race director's weekend for the hickory race all right well well i know you'll do a good job because uh, i know even with the travel uh when travel does resume when he can get in the country he will have to do a um, quarantine time so whenever he can get back to the states he'll have a, a, a mandatory quarantine time so um so whenever that is uh, even if he could get back this week um you'll still have to do the race so so i didn't know if he was uh, already back in the state so we miss chris and we wish him well and hope he can get back over here if he's even trying because that's a pretty sweet spot he's is over over there <laughs> <laughs> yeah the pictures look like i said i mean it looks beautiful over there. i mean i you know i've never been out of the country so you know i just gotta uh look at the pictures and dream i guess <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy well, thank you for doing a fantastic job with the uh, Solid Rock Carriers Cars Tour and um, some tough decisions, and everybody thinks they uh, can do your job. Let me tell you, folks, hardest job at the racetrack. I would not want to begin to even try to do Danny's job uh, at all uh, or Chris's job. No way, no how. So uh, yeah. thank you, Danny, for stepping in for Chris and being there and wanting to be there uh, to to do that job because that is uh, a tough job to do and not an easy job. And thank you for wanting to do it right, giving it your all, and doing a great job that you do. Thank you, Danny. And uh, we will let you go, and we will continue on rocking on and racing on. The Governor Stupor ain't going to stop us. <laughs> That's right. We're sorry, hey, the number you have dialed is not in service at this time.